Recently, I've been playing Elden Ring from Bandai Namco and From Software. A little bit of background before we start. I've basically grown up with the Souls games. I played Demon Souls back in 2010, but quit early on because it was too hard. <laughs> Demon Souls is too hard. <laughs> I played Dark Souls at release and it blew my mind and hooked me to this shit for life. Played Dark Souls 2 at release and uh, <laughs> my opinion on it has been fluctuating ever since. Held out on Bloodborne but eventually picked it up. Got into Dark Souls 3 at release and it made me feel like a child again. BT dubs, take a shot every time I mention Dark Souls 3. Skipped out on Sekiro but got memed into it, don't ask. There are some more Souls-likes mixed in there, but those are the broad strokes. I say all this to explain my mindset. I'm a stubborn old man to this genre, yelling at the Fortnite kids to get off his Darkroot garden. So if it will sound like I'm mostly complaining about Elden Ring, please understand. I was not very motivated to play this at release. Partly because of my own fault, I played like 105 hours of Dark Souls Remastered the year before, and like 22 hours of Demon Souls the month before the release of Elden Ring, so I was a little souls liked out. I spent the first 30 hours feeling rather enthusiastic, mostly unimpressed with the overall design. Didn't we spend like almost a decade criticizing Ubisoft games with the same quantity over quality design philosophy? My major overriding thought while playing Elden Ring was, this is just Dark Souls 3, but open world. And if you didn't like Dark Souls 3, I can't imagine why you would like this. But then, an old Dark Souls forum friend approached me for a co-op run. The communal experience and the sharing of opinions of the game helped me to have a kinder disposition to Elden Ring. Still, not fond of how the gameplay has simultaneously been dumbed down, yet has added a bunch more mechanics to the point that it feels unfocused. Elden Ring has roughly the same amount of weapons, armor, spells, etc. as any other Souls game. But the Souls games were tightly designed dungeons that led into each other, and items were clearly laid out within them. Elden Ring is an open world, and a big one at that. All the stuff is spread out all over the world. You could go for hours and hardly find anything, or even completely miss something important. It's like a single jar of jam spread out over 50 feet of toast. This is how you get players saying the world is barren, when technically it's not. There's still plenty of stuff to pick up, maybe even too much, but they don't get that lizard brain sensation of reward. Unless it's a weapon, an armor, a spell, or something they can actually use. Something that makes them feel like they're progressing. I can think of like two remedies for this. Either add more shit in general, which is asking for a lot on top of all the other stuff they made, or make the world smaller. Think about it. If Elden Ring started out in the design phase at like 12 times the size of Dark Souls 3, but FromSoft reconsidered and decided to make it 9 times the size of Dark Souls 3, we would still think the world was huge. That would also mean more development time would have been put into other aspects of the game that might have really needed it. Speaking of, let me tell you about my bonfire dog food theory. Take a 50 pound bag of dog food, open it from the midsection, and dump it at your feet. A lot of pieces will probably clump together in the same spot, while some pieces will fly off into the distance. That's what the bonfires are like in this game, or sites of grace if you want to be pedantic. No artful placement, just all over the place at random, sometimes too close and sometimes too far away. A lot of them won't even matter. You could go through the entire game and miss like a third of them and nothing would change. The only exceptions to this are the Legacy Dungeons, air quotes, which are similar to the older Dark Souls dungeons but are separate from the open world. These are mostly fine to fairly well designed, if following the Dark Souls 3 model of too many bonfires and not enough shortcuts. Elden Ring also continues the unfortunate trend of enemies and bosses awkwardly withholding or overly extending attacks. This started in Bloodborne and continued in Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro. Souls likes are in an arms race with their own player base, creeping ever closer to bullshit by making enemy movesets think 10 steps ahead of the player. 
Good God, is it tedious. Another trend continued from Dark Souls 3 is that bleed is king. Weapons that cause bleed, whether by use of the enemies or the player, builds up too quickly and takes off a huge chunk of health when it tops off. This makes bleed weapons like Rivers of Blood ubiquitous in PvP, even driving other players to make counter builds. Bleed was hardly an issue in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 because it took forever to build up. I would know because I beat Vendrick with no giant souls and exclusively with bleed. I was kind of insane back then as opposed to now, where I'm only slightly insane. When they buffed it in Dark Souls 3, they overcorrected and made it too good. Elden Ring did eventually get a patch to bring it down a notch, but, uh, yeah. Weapon durability has been taken out entirely. I'm not even quite sure why. You would think it was because they didn't want players stopping to go back to bonfires to repair or needing to switch to a weaker weapon they might not know how to use while traveling, but I don't buy that while there's too many bonfires too close together. I think they took it out after complaints about the durability system in Breath of the Wild, which Elden Ring pulls some inspiration from. Another change is to the jump. In past games it was difficult and involved proper timing by running and double tapping the run button. This is because running and jumping is actually difficult, especially in a suit of armor. In Elden Ring, it has a dedicated button, and you can do it while running or not. This feels like a necessary change for an open world game, allowing players more free movement. Personally, I think it's fine. A little awkward to hold run and tap jump at the same time when it's not the same button, but whatever. Some attacks from bosses can only be avoided with the jump, so at least FromSoft were committed to using it to the fullest. Look, this is still FromSoft. So sometimes the positives of their games go ignored because they're treated rather matter of fact. So going forward, let me bring up the stuff I like. Firstly, I love the horse. It's easily one of the best parts of Elden Ring. It moves pretty fast, it has its own health bar, but you can heal it with your own Estus or craft its own healing items. It can even double jump! Excellent addition overall. Despite some major flaws, there are some bosses that are pretty well designed, whether by moveset or by appearance or both. Too bad they're the uh, exception rather than the rule. I like how each area of the open world has its own color palette. It helps to make each one distinct from each other. A step up from the constant brown churches of Dark Souls 3, Elden Ring takes a page from out of Subnautica's book by having a large landmark be the focal point of the map. In this case, a giant golden tree. It's uh, certainly awe-inspiring and is made an essential part of the lore. The Ashes of War are basically the weapon arts from Dark Souls 3, but with some more variety. I do like how they can actually change the scaling for weapons, allowing for any weapon to work for any build. Introduced in Elden Ring are Spirit Ashes, which is a kind of diegetic summon. These also come in a vast variety and can be improved. I didn't use these very often, but I feel like this is a positive addition for newer or offline players. Elden Ring also introduces a conventional crafting system. I'm of two minds about this. On the one hand, it fills out the world with resources and gives the players agency to experiment. On the other, it can be annoying to stop whatever you're doing to grind random crap to have what could be an essential edge to traverse an area or to win a fight. Still not as good as the cooking in Breath of the Wild. Let's cap this off by saying Elden Ring is rather messy. FromSoft are a quality developer, so there's no doubt that said quality would shine through here. But it also carries the baggage of bad decisions of the past along with all new ones. Yet, I can't help but feel affection for it. I don't feel like it's better than its predecessors like Dark Souls 1 or its inspirations like Breath of the Wild, but that's not a bad thing. We should let FromSoft feel free to experiment and screw up sometimes, but make them aware of our opinions so they can do better. They have proven themselves to make great art before, so why not just let them follow their muse, so to speak. I'm going to rank this one at Good. Right above Demon Souls, that's right, next to the first Souls game, sue me. But right below Alien Isolation. And you can make of that what you will.